IntelliTrace is a historical debugger. What this means is that we can collect an IntelliTrace log file that we can then ship to another machine and open up way after the log was created and still get a debugger experience. This is great for collecting issues from production servers that are hard to reproduce and where we can't attach remote debuggers. I'm going to show you a couple of ways of how to use IntelliTrace. The first way is how to use IntelliTrace when you're coding. I call this F5 IntelliTrace. I have a simple solution open. It's a calculator and I'm going to go to debug and select options and settings and you'll see under IntelliTrace I've enabled IntelliTrace and I've enabled IntelliTrace events only. This is a very lightweight log uh, and no, very little performance impact. So let's go ahead and debug. So here I'm going to try 6 plus 3 equals, that looks okay. Let's try 3 times 6 equals, that's 9. 3 minus 2 equals, oh hang on, 3 times 6 is not equal to 9. So now if I didn't have IntelliTrace I'd have to stop, set some breakpoints, go and figure out which scenario uh, was smelly. Uh, in this case, I don't have to because I can come back into Visual Studio and hit break all. And when I do that, it's going to open up the IntelliTrace log. And here you can see all the gestures that have been captured, as well as a couple of exceptions. So let's look at one of these exceptions. So if I click on the exception event, it's going to take me to the line of code that threw the exception. So here I can see that there's a system IO directory not found exception where there's a path that's not being found. So there's the, th the exception being thrown. If I advance that one event, there I see the exception being caught. And of course that's being consumed so we don't actually see it in the application. There are other events that have been captured here. There's a whole bunch of gesture events and there's a whole class of events that can be captured by IntelliTrace. ASP.NET events, adder.NET events and so on. So here let's go and we'll see here we've had 3 multiplied by 6 equals. So if we click on the equals here we can see where it came in. So we had... So let's look it down. Let's look down a little bit in our log and here we can see where we had 6... 3 multiplied by 6 equals. Alright and that brings us into the equals method but there's not a lot more that we can see with just the events view. This is helpful but we may need to crank up the diagnostic capabilities. So let's stop debugging and let's change IntelliTrace to, to the IntelliTrace events and call information setting. This is a lot more performance impacting but it gives us a lot richer uh, events. This does affect application performance. However, it'll give us a lot more diagnostic information. So again, let's run and let's try that again. 3 multiplied by 6 equals and we get 9 and again we could carry on but I'm going to hit break all and when I hit break all this time when I go to the equals event and you can see I can go to the calls view and here I can see the events so there's the button equal click event and if I right click I can say switch to entry of call and that's going to take me to the actual call that triggered that event and here in the gutter you can see I have some controls that will let me actually rewind or go forward in the in the stack so I'm gonna go forward here and so here we can see we're stepping through now we're stepping through when we're running the application but this is not necessarily needed. We'll, we'll show you just now how you can step through and get the same experience from just the log file without even debugging. So here as I step over I can mouse over val2 and I can let me pin that value so I can see that val2 is 6. Let's, um, let's mouse over val1 and then we can see the value of val1 and so we can pin that as well and now we can continue to step in and now we're stepping into the multiply method and here we can see that the multiply method is doing something bad and if I open up the locals window I can actually see the input and the output parameters that have been captured by IntelliTrace. So I see val 1's coming in as 3, val 2's coming in as 6 and the return value for that method is 9.
So that's how we can use IntelliTrace while we're debugging from within Visual Studio. IntelliTrace logs can also be captured as part of test runs. I'm going to open up Microsoft Test Manager where I've set up a test plan and I have a test case and if I go and look at the properties of the plan you can see that the test settings I'm using are a test setting called manual diagnostic. Now if I open that up and go to the data and diagnostics section here you can see I've got a few machines in my lab one of the machines is the web server that's running a particular website. You can see under IntelliTrace that I've enabled the IntelliTrace data collector on the web server. Now whenever a tester is testing against this lab we'll get an IntelliTrace log from any failures. The tester has run a particular test and that test is failing and they've logged a bug. So let's go and find that bug inside of Visual Studio. So I'm going to search for any work item that has the word creation in it. And here's bug And here's bug 253. So I'm going to double click that to open up the bug. And here we can see the steps that have passed and failed. We can see a video attachment there. So these are other diagnostic collectors. But down here on the web server machine, I can see remote agent web server, there's an IntelliTrace file. So I'm going to open up the IntelliTrace file. And you can see it says the build associated with this IntelliTrace log file has published symbols to a symbols folder. Now the reason it's able to say this is because when I set up the team build, let me open up the team build definition. One of the settings in the process is telling team build where to put the symbols. So here you can see I have path to publish symbols is and I've given it a shared folder to put the symbols. So the symbols are the PDB files. So I haven't deployed these PDB files onto my test server, but uh, Visual Studio is able to find them uh, because they're indexed in the symbol server. So let's go back to the IntelliTrace file. And here I'll get to see all of the events that this, these are all under exception data. So these are all the exceptions that have occurred during the test run. And I can see some other some other information like I can expand the test data and here I can see the test steps right here's the failed test steps I may want to start debugging at that point if I if I want to if we go and look at this set of exception data I can see there's a null reference exception there are some bind runtime binder exceptions so there are a lot of exceptions that are being caught and uh, consumed that we don't see in the application because it's ASP.NET framework but there's these null reference exceptions. So I'm going to select the bottom one, which is the first one to occur. And if I look at the call stack, I can see that the call stack is within my code. It's in the web.controllers.servicetickets.controller.create method. And so we can go to that particular exception, and I'm going to click this debug newest exception in group. Now Visual Studio will ask me if I want to download the symbols from the symbol store. And of course, I trust my own symbol store, so I'm going to select yes and using the symbol information and the log file it's able to take me to the line of code that caused the exception. Now if I expand here I can see exactly what the exception is it's a null reference exception and I can also then start backing up here in the uh, in the controls here to go and go and see exactly why we're getting this exception. So if I back up one more you can see now in my locals I've got opened and opened is a property of the this object and the this object is the service ticket. I can open that up and here I can actually see some of the properties of that object that were collected in the log file. Remember I'm not debugging I'm just connecting to the IntelliTrace log file that was collected during the testers run. And so here I can see what the values of some of these properties were. Um, we're not going to be able to see everything. IntelliTrace doesn't collect exactly everything. Uh, it will collect primitives like strings and integers and so on. And so now we're able to go and debug. So we can see that the service ticket uh, is not null. And if we go forward, we can actually see that uh, we're calling this created by dot ID. And so the null reference exception must be on this created by object. So with just a couple of clicks uh, around the log file, we're able to very quickly diagnose the issue. Another way I can collect IntelliTrace logs is through application insights. 
what I've got here is I've got the same Fabricam Fiber.web uh, project and what I've done is I've right clicked that project and I've selected add application insights telemetry to project. Now I've already done that so it says open application insights portal which will take me to the app insights portal for this project but before you've done that it will allow you to add the telemetry. Now that'll walk you through a wizard where you're connected up to your Visual Studio Online account um, you don't need to have the source code on Visual Studio Online necessarily uh, but you do need Visual Studio Online in order to host the App Insights dashboards. What that'll do is it'll create an App Insights config file and over here under the config file you can then specify uh, the unique ID for this application and some other settings um, what events you're interested in collecting and so on. So I'm just, I've just left everything as the default. I've then gone and published this to my server. So here on my server I'm going to just do a get web application monitoring status uh, and this commandlet comes after you install the Microsoft monitoring agent which is uh, kind of an updated version of the SCOM agent that has some of the App Insights telemetry built into it. So at the moment no web applications are being monitored and so I want to start monitoring for my application. Alright, so I'm going to go up to this command here, start web application monitoring. I'm going to give it the cloud parameter which is going to tell it to upload the monitoring logs to App Insights and I'm going to give it the name of the website and which in this case is default website Fabricam Fiber. So that's where the website is being hosted on my machine. So that's going to then go and uh, start monitoring that website and that website has the App Insights config file which will tell it where exactly it can put the logs and so on. Now there's a lot we can do with App Insights which uh, I'm not going to cover in this particular session but what I did want to show you was here on my dashboard for the Fab Fiber site I can see that in the last uh, couple of days I've had a number of performance events and I've had some exception events and so on. There's a whole bunch of dashboards we can create. I'm going to click on this exception events and that's going to take me to the events page where I can see uh, the the uh, exceptions and over here I can see lambda method failed null reference exception. So what I'm going to do is uh, expand this little drop down here and select show details and that's going to open up the event details window for me and here I'll be able to see uh, the uh, exception I can see uh, I can see within that exception and here I'll be able to see the the stack trace and uh, so I can see um, some of the parameters that were passed in again you can see here that uh, I can actually see some of the values that have been collected for objects that are being passed into the method I can see what line of code uh, the exception was caught on but what I can do is I can download the IntelliTrace file and once I've downloaded that file I'll be able to open up that file and that's going to open up that file in Visual Studio for me and here I'll be able to open up the solution right so this is going to go and connect to the solution inside of my team project so I'm just going to connect to my team project and in this case it's a git repository and it's actually going to open up the commit that was last committed in for the build that I've deployed out here all right so I made a I may have worked on this uh, code since it was put into production and so what I've got locally is actually a different version to what was used when the build was created that's now been deployed out and so this is going to go and get a, a particular uh, commit a particular instance of that of that git repository and from there I'm able to go and debug and so now that that has opened up I can click onto that exception and we can select debug newest exception in group and that is going to then load the symbols again and once the symbols have been loaded it's going to take us directly to the line of code that caused that exception. You'll also notice that a code map has been drawn here for me so I can actually see the exception and which element that exception is in and if I expand the parameters here I'll be able to see uh, the objects that were passed into the create method. In this case it's just the service ticket with uh, its corresponding properties.
and from there the experience is the same as uh, debugging any IntelliTrace.